My work is largely to do with the education of children in poor countries, particularly Africa, South Asia, you know, India, Nepal, Pakistan, uh, and Southeast Asia. And that focus makes me and the rest of my colleagues in UNICEF look at the world in a slightly different way. And I'm going to try and explain this slightly different way. One thing, I'm going to be asking you questions as well. So this presentation is structured around five, five questions, right? And the first question is, why do we send our kids to school, right? I'm going to give you my answer, and then if anybody disagrees with it, can you shout out and say, no, that's complete rubbish, OK? Right, and we'll adopt the same principle for all five questions. <laughs> right, question number one, why do we send our kids to school? My answer is to pass on 4,000, 5,000 years' worth of civilization. It's to teach them uh, all the things that we have learnt in our history, our culture, so that they can interact with other people in their societies, our science, so that they can understand the world, uh, how to read and write, so that they can continue to learn from people who are no longer there, yeah? Mathematics, so that they can understand how the concept of quantity works. Oh, by the way, I used to be a maths teacher. Just, sorry. Why do we... So that's my answer. We teach kids to ensure their future, so that they can grow up to be self-fulfilled, so that they can engage in their society, and so that they can get a good job. But getting a good job is only one of the aspects of why we send our kids to school. Why do we, why do we organize it into schools? Why, do we, why don't we just homeschool all of our kids? And the answer is it's more efficient and more effective. If you've got one teacher for 30 kids, or 20 kids, or whatever it is, or 120 kids in some countries in Africa, um, that's more efficient than having one parent with one or two kids. It also, putting kids into schools is also really good for building up these social skills, the team working, the social networking that employers and society value so much. So there are very good reasons for schools. Also, of course, you can get teachers who are expert in everything. So whereas parents are often not expert in everything. Okay, so that's my answer to the first question. Any grand disagreements? One grand disagreement. I think a lot of people send their kids to school because they think they have to. Exactly. Okay, I'll agree with that. Okay, I, I mean, I... Hello? Um, I think there are three reasons I often see people send kids to school. It's one is to, for job skills, for their future. Another is to be good citizens, to make good decisions about their country, their culture, their... Social pressure. Exactly. Well, it's pressure or to be wise so, citizens. Social norms, you know, almost. Yeah, yeah, but to be wise citizens, to make good decisions about their future. And another reason would be to develop their passions and interests, um, which we don't do that's enough a, of. That's a good one. But yep. I think a lot of people don't think about those reasons. They send yeah. their kids to school, at least in the developed countries, because they think that's something they have to do without ever reflecting on why. That, that is an excellent answer, uh, particularly because in quite a few countries, the culture is not to send your kids to school. And what, one of the things that UNICEF is trying to do is change that mindset. Any other really burning ones before I move on? Yes. Hi. I think um, one of the reasons why a lot of people send their kids to school is to get exposure to things that they wouldn't otherwise get exposure to in their home. Different cultures, yep. different people you know, different customs so that they can metabolize and thrive in a world that's becoming increasingly different than maybe where they're living today. I agree with that too. Okay, how do we... So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There'll be time later as well. So my second question is, how do we know if schools are working? So you've heard people say, you know, education is broken. Um, actually, that goes back rather further than a lot of people have suggested. Um, the earliest example of the expression, education is broken, I found, was from 1989. And I've also found uh, an 1872 uh, Select Commission on Scientific Instruction from the UK, 
which complains about how scientific instruction in which they include maths um, uh, is really terrible. They didn't actually use the expression, education is broken, because they didn't talk like that in those days. So it, this concern with education goes back a long time. How do we know if schools are working? One of the main ways, of course, is that we test our kids. Yeah, so, and we'll be talking about testing a little bit later. There are a couple of things about testing. Um, firstly, employers don't believe the tests. Okay, no employer will take a degree certificate and just employ somebody sight unseen. Employers always bring the people in for an interview or maybe, you know, one of these sort of fishbowl exercises. And the reason they do that is that there are a whole bunch of things that you are supposed to learn in school that are not easily measured. And things like team working, how do you measure team working? Things like problem solving, which is one of the things that I think is going to continue to reappear in this, in this session. Um, so testing and particularly qualifications are used as a filter, but they're never the, the be all and end all. So is there any other way that we can find out if, our, if schools and education more broadly, if they're working? Well, actually there are, okay? And I'm just going to give you a little flavor of the sort of stuff. This is my answer, and you, I'm sure other people are going to have some other answers. The first one is, of course, earnings. So overall, throughout the world, every extra year of education translates into a 10% increase in annual wages. Okay? If you look at the whole world overall, there are all sorts of studies, mostly by the World Bank, and every extra year is worth 10% more in terms of wages. You go further in education, you earn more money. Everybody knows that. But there are some other things that people probably don't know. Productivity. In Kenya, women who are better educated produce, or educated to the same extent as men, produce 22%, uh, I'm being waved at, 22% more crops. Um, Population. In Mali, women who have been through secondary school um, have three kids. People who have not been through secondary school have seven kids. Uh, child and maternal mortality, that's already been mentioned. 50% of the children who did not die in childbirth or, uh, or in their first five years um, is down to the education of girls. Uh, disease prevention. In Indonesia, um, if your mother had been to school, any type of school, then the chances of you being immunized are 68%. If your mother has not been to school, your chances of being immunized are 19%. Um, there are also links with environmental sustainability, with social cohesion, so you get fewer civil wars in more highly educated countries. The important thing about all of these indicators is that they're correlations. They're not causal, these are just correlations. You go in, you do a study, and you say, these children were educated and they do certain things better. What we don't know is what it is about the education system that is producing these benefits, right? Nobody in wherever it was, uh, Burkina Faso, um, tells kids in school to go to a hospital to give birth. Nobody in Kenya, in the schools, they don't teach farming, yeah? So the increase in the crop productivity is because of the education they get in school, but there's no one-to-one -one link. They're not being taught farming in schools, they're just being taught, you know, English, maths, whatever, Swahili. Um, okay, so these are correlations. But there is one really good causal link. And it comes out of, there's something called the National Child Development Study in the UK. Um, it's a cohort that what they did is that they started in March 1958, one week in March 1958, um, a bunch of researchers started following every single child that had been born in the UK in that week, yeah? And they visit them every year or a couple of years. Sometimes they give them tests. They uh, track you know, whether they finish school, whether they go to college, 
what jobs they get, how much they earn. They track all of this stuff. A complete cohort, 17,000 kids, have been tracked since 1958. And there's some amazing data coming out of this. One of the, one of the most important things is that um, qualifications, more qualifications, leads to higher wages. It doesn't matter what qualification you do. You can do physics, chemistry, English, French, geography, history. If you do a particular qualification at a certain level, you will get more money, with one exception. And that exception is maths, or math, sorry. Yeah. If you do a qualification in math at a higher level, you will get 10% more money in the future, regardless of what job you're doing. You can be a lawyer and you will be, on average, you will be earning 10% more than a lawyer without that qualification in math. You can be a social worker, you can be a teacher, you can be anything. If you have got a higher level qualification in math, you will get 10% more. Why is that? People don't use math in the law. Um, yes, I'm being waved at. Yeah, Mark, I think we have to... Are we on number three or number... No, actually we're on number four, five. Okay, that's good. I mean, it's okay. a great point. So, just... Uh, okay, and I will wrap up, I promise. Um, what does it mean? What it means to me, and in the discussion afterwards we can talk about this, um, what, we, what, is, what does all this mean? For me, it means two things. The first thing is that we need to make sure that education delivers the greatest possible benefits. We need to do that for two reasons. The first reason is because it's the kid's future. The whole future is at stake, in a way. And the second reason is we put a huge amount of money into education. Every country in the world puts a huge amount of money into education. We've got to get the most for it, yeah? So the first thing is that we need to make sure that education delivers the greatest benefits. But the second lesson, I think, from this is that we need to be careful. Um, <clears throat> we shouldn't fix something that isn't broken. We need to talk to educators much more. Um, for the last 30 years in the US and in the UK and in most of Europe, at least, and also in Australia as well, um, governments have been talking to industry to find out what industry needs from education without talking to the educators to the same degree. And I think that's a mistake. And my final point is that whenever we move forward, we need to move forward on the basis of evidence, real evidence, not what people are saying in a little survey. We actually need to look at the evidence, what works. So the, the description about maths teaching today is a perfect example of the sort of evidence that we need to move forward.